for today's video I have a 92 Geo Metro LSI it's got the three cylinder one liter G10 engine and I'm going to be replacing the spark module or the whatever your word is for the ignition pickup or whatever it goes inside the distributor And just for general reliability purposes, I'm also going to be, while I have it off, be replacing the cap, the rotor, the wires, and the spark plugs just for maintenance reasons. Um, sometimes it's just while you got it in your hand and you're already taking stuff off, just put a new one on there. Start by, uh, because I'm going to be playing with electrical, in this case, I don't usually, a lot of people don't. But they just bypass this stuff, but I will be taking the uh, battery cable off We're Looking at our distributor here. I don't know what size 10. No Is that an 8? happens to be an 8 and mine happens to have a ground wire here I'm not sure if that was supposed to go on that bolt when I rebuilt this engine long ago but uh, I just found itself a ground there so that's where it reaches to Now this rotor should just pull off, there we go, and let me get a different angle for you and you can see that uh, ignition pickup coil, got you zoomed right in there, let's just verify that it's the right one, looks like the plug is the right one, I'm just comparing to what's on the car, this thing very much a different style but the plug is right so it looks like we're good to go got you backed off a little bit there now what I'm going to do is just start taking the clips off and everything so when it comes unscrewed it's not sitting there dangling around looks like this gasket has to come off oh mine's broken this slides out and then once we got all our hardware that whole thing will just fall out I'm gonna try to stay out of your way with the with, the, with my head but I have to be able to see flathead screw believe it or not painted oh no it's brass oh it's Phillips it's Phillips I just didn't see it she goes both ways and it literally comes out that easy so the old this one is um, as I said, just a little different shape and stuff, but I imagine the components inside are the same as the replacement. Let's see if we can get you in the shot there. Outwardly appearance different, but it uh, looks like the plate is the same size and everything else. So. Good. I'm going to put it back in with the Phillips. It's probably just going to be easier.
I need a shorter screwdriver. All right, off camera, I got the screws started. And I'm just gonna slide the wiring thing back in there. Connect this all up now. Good. I'm gonna leave that off to seal just because we're not ready yet. A sharp-eyed viewer will notice that there is a little bit of oil residue here. If that was to be to uh, get inside your rotor cap, wouldn't be good. Uh, mine's actually stayed dry. Not a bad enough leak where I'm going to worry about it, but something that I need to keep an eye on. There's some seals inside that shaft that must uh, for the rotor shaft that must be uh, seeping more than desired. Okay, the only thing that requires any precision on this job at all is to set up the air gap. And what I mean by that is this is adjustable up and down a little bit. You put your screw on the bottom almost tight. You leave the top on a little loose. And you can move this up and down towards that shaft, away from that shaft. And you need a certain size. For this particular car, 0.008 to 0.016 is the gap. So you have quite a bit of wiggle room there. Uh, so I'm just going to set that up and then you just lock the screws down when you have it where you like it. I've got you in there as close as my camera will go. Um, so there's three little notches. One that fires each of the uh, cylinders. You may have to turn your engine a little bit. I just turned mine by hand. So at the top of the screen there you can see that notch is right below what I need to measure here so I can measure the distance. So let's see what we have there. I'm gonna start with uh, just the big one, 0, 0012, just to see like where we're at. Yeah, we're well above it. So we'll be able to dial that down, no problem. Or I'm sorry, that was 0, 0017, not 012. Misread it. So it, it needs to go pretty tight. So let me just uh, pick one in the middle and we'll just adjust it for that. I'm going to aim mine for 0.013 and lock it down at that point. Alright, put the 0.013 in there. That's right in the middle. I'm going to need a little longer screwdriver now because I need to stay out of the way of my tools. That other tool. All right, here we go. I got 0 0.013. I'm gonna just hold this down. Try to find the screw. I'm gonna take that out of the way for a minute because it's in the way of the screw, actually. Lock that. Lock this one in. Double check our measurements, make sure nothing moved. We're good. Got you backed off some there. Again, put the wires back where they belong. Put those back in the loom, make sure your clip is good. And then let's see how this was. These parts here must go top and bottom. Yeah. Yo, yeah, well, that's been missing for a while. That piece is a big piece missing out of there. Not the best. Not enough that I'm going to put silicone or something or try to find one, a gasket for it, but it's really not a lot of debris going to get in there. Alright, now I'm going to start with the uh, new rotor. This only goes on one way. It has a flat part. Put it on all the way. Distributor cap coming. This I think also only goes on one way. I think there's a tab. Let's see. Now I guess it could go on either way.
I guess it can go on both ways, but I'm going to put it, I think that was facing the back on the last one. And this one came with uh, Phillips head screws instead of hex. So I guess they really could have either one. Depending on which brand distributor cap you buy, it might come with whichever. Actually, now that I think about it, here's a great way of telling. Just put it back how it was. That's on the top, that's on the top, or you know, the, the right side. So that's the proper way. Good way to verify. And then I'm gonna take the main spark off. I'm just gonna kinda set these on loosely because I have another set of um, wires. Just watch which one you're doing because if you get them crossed, you'll have backfiring and uh, you know, probably wouldn't start a fire, but you never know in your air cleaner. If you had a bad enough backfire, just take them off one at a time, put them where they go. Now I'm going to change the wires and the plugs. Plugs first. So we're going for the spark plugs now. Perfect, easy DIY project. Uh, this engine could not be any easier. Um, one thing to note, depending on which spark plug you get, you may have to gap them. These ones come pre-gapped and they come with these uh, boots, uh, these little protectors, so they don't get ruined in shipping and get bent in. Um, but if any brand you might have, you may have to gap them, and the gapping information is usually located on the engine information, which is located up here on the hood. It's almost always on there. Spark plug gap 0.039 if you're using standard type plugs. These happen to be the double platinums, and they come pre-gapped, so just FYI. All right, so I don't have to be gentle, so I'll just yank these out however I can get them because I have a new set of boots. Otherwise, you might want to get something in there to kind of break the seal down there because these actually go down in and seal up against the block a little bit. I may have to do that anyway. There it comes. And just do one at a time so you don't get your spark plug wires all mixed up. These are just going into aluminum heads. Some people say always use number C's, some people say never use anti C's. Whatever you think is the right thing to do, I don't judge. Always start them by hand, not with the ratchet, because you are just into aluminum. And it doesn't take much to get them uh, buggered up. set that on there, there again so you don't get them mixed up. I've only got three to pick from so you could probably figure them out pretty quick. I just broke my little plastic connector here. Phooey. That was kind of nice.
All right, plugs that fast, that easy. Okay, so I'll admit to buying cheap wire set, but it came with the little wire holders and numbers and dielectric grease. Not bad for cheapos. So you've, if you've never messed with the wire set before, this one only has three cylinders, so obviously three, three wires, and then the one that goes from the coil to the rotor to disperse the, the power. So one of them is going to be different than the rest. So um, it's going to have a different boot than the rest, which is this one. So we'll start there, and uh, there are all different lengths, so you just match up. We pull one off at a time, match it up to the length of the new one, and they should be fairly close. Dielectric grease is uh, something that helps seal out moisture, and it does not conduct electricity. So if you get a little sloppy with it, no big deal. You just put a little bit in each of the towers, and uh, it just helps prevent... Uh, any water from getting in there. Whoops. Put a little on the coil. And it also, you know, just seals it out from moisture. And you're making sure that metal's going in there. You don't care about the boot. Get the metal in first, and then you can slide the boot into it. If you've never done them before, pretty basic stuff, but some people have it. And I like this set because my other one barely made it point to point. So this way, I can take this and zip tie that, and it's not uh, pulling at any time. much better actually kind of like that take my broken clip off all right I'm going to go for the shortest one first which is the one of the on mine it's to the front of the engine depending on which way your distributor is rotated I suppose that could be different we're going to pick the shortest wire we got which is this one. Here I'd probably put just silicone up here. The one down in the head, that one's gonna, you're just gonna boil that stuff out of there. Um, I just called it silicone, by the way, I just realized I had you out of the shot there. Sorry about that. Um, I put it here instead of down here. I think that one is less important for water tightness and up here more important. And again, making sure that snaps in and then I'm pushing, I'm holding the wire and I'm pushing the boot on there. go with the next longest wire. Actually these ones happen to be just exactly the same so it doesn't matter. Get a good snap out of it. Work that boot down so it gets a nice tight seal there. Do the last one, mine's the top, goes to the left of the engine. That was hilarious. One fell on the side of the car here and I was trying to look in here to find out where it could be because it kind of hides with everything. Wasn't there the whole, wasn't there at all, it was on the ground. Alright, 
Beautiful. Just making sure those are all the way down. If those don't fill that hole real good, then when you take it out, you drop stuff in there and uh, could get in your engine. If you were to take the spark plug out without being aware, just kind of make sure that they're all feeling good. Everything's clipped in. Now I'm going to do a little reclipping. You really don't want these going around and maybe chafing on that fan shroud or something. So let's use these to our advantage. If yours didn't come with these, you could use zip ties, whatever, just keep them out of trouble. And it also prevents them from falling off. See how that's nice and it's got a nice uh, Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Being that that clip is for four and I really only need three, I'm just going to start with the three clip here. We don't have that long of a run that we're going to need all those clips. There we go. I'll use the two clip. I could have run those a little smarter. I'm gonna cut the cut cut this off and go three again. I think that'll just look better. And just because I have it, I'll use the double here. Perfect. All right, I'm just going to put my negative battery cable back on. And we'll see what we got. I hereby declare these ignition and tune-up parts Wildwood certified. Thanks for watching.